Okay, Fabricators, it's another big day. We've got the VNet data gateway that has dropped. This is gonna let us connect to private endpoint storage and be able to bring that data directly into Fabric. And that's exactly what we're gonna do next on Tales from the Field. Hey, wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Be this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we've got our MS Tech Bits. That's a video where we've been inspired by you, by the community, uh, by working with a customer or working with a product group. In this situation, I've got a customer I've been working with and they've been waiting since we announced Microsoft Fabric that they have a storage account secure with a private endpoint. They wanna get data from there and they wanna bring it into Microsoft Fabric. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to walk through that process so you know how we can do this. You know what we like to do? Let's get over that great content. All right, so we're starting out in my Azure portal and you can see one of the key things we need to do is make sure that we've got the proper resource provider installed. So what we need is the Microsoft.Power platform. If this is not registered, you can simply click on register up at the top, it's gonna to register this. But this is essential in order for us to be able to use the VNet data gateway. So make sure that we've got this set up. Next, I'm gonna to go to my storage account. Uh, I'm gonna head over to networking because I wanna let you see the setup. So first off, you can see I've got my firewall connections disabled um, and I've got it to where only my private endpoint has access. As a matter of fact, if I go to storage browser and I go to my blob containers, I can see my containers, but if I click on it, you see I get this error. This error means that I don't have access to this if I'm not in the network where my private endpoint connection is. So let's look at this a little bit more because I want to make sure we understand the setup. So I've got a private network and I've got multiple subnets. You can see I've got a couple managed instances, a SQL 2022 virtual machine, and I've also got a Bastion endpoint. What we're going to do is I'm going to go on that virtual machine. I'm going to show you how I can access this. I've set up access to my blob container. You can see there's our data container, there's fax cells, uh, the folder, and then also the CSV. What our goal is to get this CSV from our blob storage on a private endpoint into our Microsoft Fabric. So to do that, we've got to create a subnet. Come in, I'm going to name this exactly what it is because I want to keep it simple, Fabric VNet. Um, and then the only other thing I need to change is I need to delegate a service and it's going to be for the Microsoft Power Platform VNet Access Links. And that's part of the reason we have to have that provider registered. We go ahead and click Save. It's not going to take a lot of time. It's going to add this subnet. This is the subnet we're going to use. Now I'm going to go over to Microsoft Fabric. I'm going to go to my settings and to the manage connections and gateways, because this is where we're going to have to set this up. Click on a virtual gateway. We're going to click new. And when we do this, it's going to pop up. There's going to be information we need to fill out. So first off, I need the license capacity that I'm using. I'm using a trial capacity. Um, and then I need my Azure subscription. Then we need the resource group where we have provisioned the VNet resource we're going to use. That's my SQL and my insiders. And my virtual network is my VNet SQL and my insiders. And then the subnet is the one we created, the Fabric-VNet. After this happens, we've got some other advanced configuration options. We're not going into that today. I'm just going to click Save. And then I click Close. You can see it created my VNet in the background. Now I jump over to my Dataflow Gen 2, and I'm going to get our data. I'm going to go to Get Data. I'm going to choose a blob source and click for my Azure Blob Container. Now I need the URL for my storage account. Uh, and that's what we're going to put in there. But then I go to my data gateway and I select the VNet data gateway that we just created. I'm going to use an account key for this, um, which I get from my storage account. And I'm going to paste that in. And then I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now, depending on your connectivity, your geolocation, this may take a while to set up. Uh, but once it does, you can see there's my data container that we had. The binary file shows up. It's binary. We're going to have to expand this when we get in, but don't worry. We're not supposed to see the CSV. All we have to do is click on binary. It will expand the, the underlying file system that we have. And there you go. You can see all of that. Now, to save this, I need to close Copilot and go to my data destinations. I go to Lakehouse, and I've already got my Lakehouse in place. You know, we've written multiple things to our Lakehouse before. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. It's going to give me 
an option to be able to select the lake house. Now there's a lot in my organization, so I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the Brad and Naraj workspace that I always work out of. Um, and when I find that one, I'm going to expand my baseball lake house because I want you to see the tables that I already have in place because we're going to create a new table. So this expands. Let's name this something new. This is going to be my cells from a private endpoint because I want this to be exactly what it is. And you can see I select my lake house. I click next. And now we've got our destination in place. At this point in time, we could make some changes. Now, I didn't get my column headers in here properly. I'm not going to mess with that right now. I'm just going to go and I'm going to publish this. Once the data flow Gen 2 runs, and it's going to kick off right away when we go ahead and publish it, I wait for it. You can see it's published successfully. It's running. I head over to my lake house. There's my private endpoint table. Magic. Oh, look at that. All the data is right there. So we did it. We, we got our data from a storage account with a private endpoint, and now we have it in our Microsoft Fabric. This is amazing stuff. So you know where we like to keep this going? Down in the comments. Uh, sound off. Is there anything you didn't understand? Anything that wasn't clear? Thank you so much for joining us today on Tales from the Field. We really appreciate you, and goodbye, everybody. Today's going to be a good day.